So in this video, what I want to do is explore how to solve some hard absolute value equations. Now, these are not like extremely hard problems, but if you're kind of shooting for an A in your class, these are going to be those types of questions that can really make sure to test your understanding. So I highly recommend that you have an understanding and know how to approach them um, because they are the more difficult types of problems that you can kind of expect um, to see when trying to solve absolute value equations. And really, it all kind of stems with having a variable on both sides. So if I had the absolute value of 15 plus m is going to be equal to a negative um, 2m plus 3. Because when we have a variable on both sides, what we have to be concerned with is our extraneous solutions. And extraneous solutions are basically just a solution that works for a simplified equation, but does not work for the original equation. All right. So in this case, you know, we have the absolute value of 15 plus m is equal to a negative 2m plus 3. Now, the important thing here is like our absolute value is isolated, right? So now what we can do here is we simply just go ahead and create those two cases, just like we did for more basic examples. We can say, all right, basically just take everything as it is without the absolute value. So if 15 plus um, m is equal to a negative 2m plus 3. And then we also have to do the negative version, right? Because that absolute distance, right, could be in the positive or negative direction. So therefore, um, the argument here is going to be the same. So 15 plus m, but now it's going to equal to a positive 2m. Actually, you know what? Let's write this out because we do have two variables. So I'm going to negate it. And I'm going to use parentheses, okay? Now, again, you don't need to do this for each one. But again, just make sure you negate everything, okay? So a lot of times, sometimes students will think, oh, negation is just make things negative. No, negate means make things the opposite sign. So basically, when I multiply this by negative, I'm making the negative times everything. That's why I showed that in parentheses. So I just wanted to kind of make that extra point because, again, it's like a very common mistake um, that students that we will see students make. And actually, that's a negative 2m. So that's supposed to be a positive. And you can see I'm already like kind of making some mistakes, right? <laughs> be careful out there. So that's a 2m minus 3. Okay, so that's what you should get, even though it should not look as bad as that. All right, so now basically what we have is two equations, right? And we just have variables on both sides. So remember when we're solving um, linear equations, first thing we want to do is get the variable to the same side. So I'm going to do a 15 is equal to a negative um, 3m plus 3, and then I'll subtract a 3 on both sides here, and I get a 12 is equal to a negative 3m. Now to undo multiplication by negative 3, I will divide using the division property of equality on negative 4, and there are negative 3. And so therefore it's going to give me a negative 4 is equal to an m. Okay. Um, and then over here, what we're going to do is again, get the variable to the same side. So I'll subtract an M and then I get a 15 is equal to a M minus three. Now I will add a three to both sides and then I get an 18 is equal to an M. Okay. So now what we need to do is go ahead and test, right? We need to make sure our equations work. So what we need to do is again, we can just go back and we plug them back into our equation. And again, we want to make sure like these equations better make better work, right? It better satisfy um, the left makes better satisfy the equation, whereas the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. All right, so what I have here is a 15 plus a negative 4 closed absolute value is equal to a negative 2 times a negative 4 plus 3. Okay, and I don't really have enough room to do on this one, so let's go and do this one first. So absolute value of 15 plus negative 4 is going to be 11, right? Absolute value of 11 is just 11, okay? And then over here, negative 2 times negative 4 is going to be a positive 8. 8 plus 3 is equal to 11, so we're good to go. Um, now let's go ahead and check this one out. So if I did a 15, um, absolute value of 15 plus, what is that, 18? 18, okay, is going to equal to a negative 2 times an 18 plus 3. Okay, so 15 times, um, so 15 plus a 18. Now, what do I have? An m plus an 18, right? So 15 plus an 18, um, that is going to equal to a 33. And this one is going to equal to a negative 36. Ah, yeah, that's it. So a negative 36 plus 3, that's going to equal to a negative 33. And you can see that doesn't work, right? 33 is not equal to a negative 33. So therefore, this is going to be what we call an extraneous solution. See, what happens is it satisfied this equation, right? M is equal to 18 in this equation, but it does not satisfy the original equation, right? Because when you plug 18 into the original equation, you get 33 is equal to a negative 33, which is not true, right? So therefore, that's why we call it an extraneous solution. All right, what about if we had some operations? Oh, no, what happened to that? Um, crap, I lost that pen thing. If I can run that. There you go. Okay. So what about if we have another equation where maybe we have some inverse operations? So let's say we look at something like this. 2w plus a, uh, let's do 2w plus 3. Absolute value minus 4 all over a 3. And therefore, that's going to equal an x. Okay. All right. Now, remember, the first thing we always have to do whenever you're creating your positive and your negative cases for absolute value is you have to isolate the absolute value. 
right? So don't try to do your two cases right now. We got to get rid of our inverse operations. Now, in this previous example, uh, over here, like let's just look at a two-step equation, right? We always undid addition and subtraction first. But here, what I want you to understand is we actually need to undo division in this case first because everything is being divided by three. So what we need to do is actually multiply by three on both sides to get rid of my division, okay? Now, I'm just going to have an absolute value of 2w plus 3, and that's going to be minus 4 is equal to a 3x, okay? Now, I can go ahead and add the 4 to the other side, and now that's going to leave me with an absolute value of a 2w plus 3 is equal to a 3x plus 4. Now, my absolute value is isolated on the left-hand side. Now, I can go ahead and complete that um, positive and negative case, all right? So my positive case, 2w plus 3, is equal to a 3x plus 4. And then over here, I get a 2w plus 3 is equal to a negative 3x minus 4, right? Please don't make the mistake. Like, I'm not going to show you parentheses like I did in the last example. You could, right? This is the wrong. Just make sure you negate everything, okay? All right, so now let's just go and solve these two-step equations. So again, first thing we're going to want to do, um, why did I go from x's to y's? What am I doing here? So that's definitely supposed to be a W. Actually, what was the original problem? I don't even remember what the original problem. Oh, I, I think I wrote it down. So I did W's and what was that first problem? That was a W. So I think this is supposed to be an X. So I just wrote that down wrong. So let's fix that, that, and that. And let's put them as X's. Um, we don't want two variables. We're not solving for two variables. So sorry for being confusing for you. But yeah, we're definitely going to use X's here because um, we didn't use X's yet. Okay, so now we're going to get the variable to the same side, right? So I'm going to subtract a 2x on both sides. All right, so therefore that's a 3 is equal to, sorry, make sure I subtract the 2x over here and subtract the 2x over there. Okay, so I have a 3 is equal to an x plus 4, and I can just subtract the 4 to the other side. So 3 minus 4 is a negative 1. Negative 1 is equal to an x. And then over here, I'm going to be left with a 3 is equal to a negative 5x minus 4. Add the 4 to both sides. That's going to be a 7 equals a negative 5x. And now what we're going to do is divide by negative 5 on both sides. And therefore, we can say x is equal to a negative 7 fifths. Okay, so now let's go and check our work, right? Again, we got to go back and check. We got to look for that extraneous solutions. Just because we got a solution here, right, for these two equations does not mean it is a solution for the original equation. You have to make sure you go back and check your work, right? There's a reason why on previous videos when I was doing very, very easy basic equations, I just kind of ingrained that we have to check our work because we don't just want to assume that these two equations are going to um, make the original equation true. So let's go and plug them in. So I have a 2 times negative 1 plus 3, right, is equal to a 3 times negative 1 plus 4. Okay, so now let's see what happen, happen here. So we have 2 times negative um, 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3 is going to be a positive 1. Absolute value of 1 is just going to be a 1. And then 3 times negative 1 is a negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 is going to be a um, positive 1. So that one works. All right, let's do a fraction. Love fractions. So that's going to be a negative 7 fifths um, plus a 3 is equal to a 3 times a negative 7 fifths plus 4. All right, now this one doesn't look like a lot of fun. I get it. Um, but the main thing you want to do is actually just rewrite these all with fractions, okay? So what I can do here is I can say 3 is equal, as far as fifths, just multiply by 5 on top. So that's the same thing as a 15 fifths, right? Because 15 div 5 divides in 15 how many times? 3 times. Same thing with the 4, right? I can rewrite a 4 is the same thing as 20 fifths. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite everything in that term. Um, therefore, it's a little bit easier for me to go ahead and simplify or apply my math. Now, I'm not going to do this with the 3. I'm just going to do this with the adding of the 4 and the 3. And the reason being is because um, whenever you're adding or subtracting, remember fractions, you have to have common denominators, right? So I have to have that 5 as my denominator. All right, so I can multiply this, though. That's going to be a negative 14 fifths plus a 3, which is a 15 fifths. Absolute value is equal to a three time, or I'm sorry, that's a negative, what, 21 fifths? So it's a negative 21 fifths, right? Because again, remember, that's like a three over one. So you just multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. And then plus a four, I can rewrite that as a 20 fifths. Okay. So negative 14 fifths plus 15 fifths is going to be a negative one fifth, right? Absolute value of that, which is going to be a positive one fifth. And then over here, I have negative 21 fifths plus 20 fifths is going to be a one fifth. I'm sorry. Sorry, a negative one fifth. And you can see that the left hand side is not the same, right? So, therefore, when I get x is equal to a negative seven fifths, that is an extraneous solution. That does not work. So, be very, very careful with that. All right. Um, what about one more example? 
what about if I have an absolute value on both sides? So what if I had an equation that looked, looked, that looked something maybe like this? I had something like x minus 2, absolute value of x minus 2, is equal to the absolute value of 3x plus 1. What will we do on a problem like this? So on a problem like this, you got to remember there's, there's four cases, right? For every absolute value, you have to include the positive as well as the negative version of that, right? For every single case, you have to include that positive or negative version. So what I'm going to first do is I'm just going to kind of create four cases. So case number one is everything's positive. X minus 2 is equal to a 3x plus 1. Okay. Case number two is I'm just going to negate a side. Let's negate the right-hand side. So again, basically what you're doing is just multiplying the right-hand side by a negative. So that'd be an X minus two is equal to a, let's just negate it, negative three X plus one. All right. And then case number three is let's negate the left-hand side. So that's going to be a negative X minus two is equal to a three X plus one. Ah, I ran out of room. And then case number four is going to be negation of everything. So I'll do that. I'll let me go ahead and solve this and then we'll, I'll come back to that. All right, so in this case, um, let's just go ahead and solve. So I'll subtract an x on both sides. Let's subtract the one on both sides. So here I get a negative three is equal to a positive two x, divide by two, divide by two, x is equal to a negative three halves. X is equal to, let's actually fix that. All right, so x is going to equal to a negative three halves. Um, now on this one, again, if I go ahead and negate, so I get an x minus two is equal to a negative three x minus one. Um, let's see, I can go ahead and add the three X to the other side. So add the three X. So I get a four X minus two equals a negative one, add the two, add the two. And I get a four X is equal to a one divide by four, divide by four X is equal to a one fourth. And then over here again, you negate. So I get a negative X plus two is equal to a three X plus one. Again, we want to get the variable to the same side, right? So I'm going to add an X to both sides. And then I can subtract the one on the other side. So I get a one is equal to a four X. And hopefully you understand that's just going to give me again, a X equals to the one fourth. Um, and then let's look at the negated version. So I have an X minus, I'm sorry, if I was to negate this. So option number four is a negative X minus two equals a negative three X minus, or I'm sorry, three X minus a negated three X plus one. Okay. So now we can distribute right? Make sure you apply distributive property here. And when I do that, I get a negative X plus two is equal to a negative three X minus one. So again, just be very, very careful with that distributive property. All right. So now let's get them to the same side. So I'll add an X to both sides. I'll add my one to both sides. In this case, I get a three is equal to a negative two X divide by negative two, divide by negative two X is equal to a negative three halves, which we already had, right? So I'm actually not going to write that in there. So we have two cases, or we have two solutions. So our two solutions are x equals a negative three halves and x is equal to a one fourth. But now we gotta go and test them, right? So we found our two solutions. Some of them were like um, duplicated, right? But that's fine, they're both still a solution. So now we just need to go ahead and test them back into our equation, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to plug them in. So let's see here, I have a, a negative three halves. Now, again, if we're going to write things in terms of halves, let's say we have two and one, right? So I remember two is equal to a four halves and a one is equal to a two halves, right? So just remember those two things. That's going to come important. All right. So we have an X minus instead of writing two, right? I don't, I'm not even going to waste my time writing two. I'm going to write this as a four halves. So it's a negative three halves minus a four halves, right? Because what's four divided by two? It's just two right? And then that's going to equal a absolute value of a three times what? Three halves? Yeah. Negative three halves. Okay. And then that's going to be plus one, which is the same thing as two over two. All right. So now let's see what we get here. So negative three minus four is going to be a negative seven. So that's a negative seven halves. Absolute value of that is going to be absolute value of negative seven halves is going to be a positive seven halves. Okay. And that's going to equal to, let's see what here we have over here. So in this case, um, we have a negative nine halves. So negative nine halves plus two halves. Well, negative nine plus two, uh, negative nine plus two is a negative seven, right? So therefore that's going to absolute value of negative seven halves is going to be a seven halves. So we are good. All right, let's try one more. Let's do the other case now. So again, what was that X, right? Yeah. So our other case is a one fourth. Okay. So I have a one fourth 
minus. Now in this case, um, I wanna do two, but I wanna rewrite it as fourths, right? So two is equal to a eight fourths, right? Isn't that equal to two? And one is equal to a four fourths. All right, so I have a one fourth, right, which I plugged in. I didn't use parentheses here. That's why I think I got kind of got confused. All right, so it's a one fourth minus, I'm gonna write this as an eight fourths. Again, you can write two if you want to, but then you have to change it to a fraction anyway. So just keep it like this. Um, and that's gonna equal to a three times a one fourth. Sorry, that's inside parentheses, right? Or inside the absolute value. And then that's gonna be plus a one, which is the same thing as four fourths. Okay, so let's see what we get here. In this case, we get a negative seven fourths. Um, right, so negative seven fourths, absolute value of a negative seven fourths is just going to be a positive seven fourths. And then over here, we're going to have a, let's see, that's going to be a three fourths plus four fourths. And a three fourths plus four fourths is going to be a positive seven fourths and absolute value of positive seven fourths, ladies and gentlemen, is just going to be a seven fourths. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, then go ahead and check out my next video. Cheers.